I'm going to give a presentation uh, about whether or not hot dogs is a sandwich. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some definition really quickly. Um, Merriam-Webster defines a hot dog as a Frankfurt, typically mild flavor, but it's heated and used to serve in a long split bowl. Um, a sandwich uh, is two or more slices of bread or a split roll having a filling in between. That sounds vaguely hot dogish. Um, <laughs> or it can be one slice of bread covered with food, which is a pretty really broad definition. There's a second definition Mary Webster gives, though, which says that also it's something resembling a sandwich. <laughs> now, I'm not totally sure about this, but I do know someone who went to Harvard University who said once, anything resembling a sandwich is a sandwich. That sounds like a slippery freaking slope. <laughs> All right, in 2010, I received a postcard from Chad Patel. This is from the GS Harvard Archives, by the way. It said, do or do not, there is no try. Um, so for a while, I tried really hard to think about whether a hot dog is a sandwich. We're not doing this. Here's my actual presentation. I want to talk about ELO rankings, which is how you figure out uh, in a broad swath of competitors the relative strength of various uh, competitors. Uh, what is ELO? ELO is a ranking system developed by our I'm a Hungarian American physics professor and master level chess player in the 1930s. It replaced a prior system used by the United States Chess Federation, uh, which was prone to spoofing uh, if like people hadn't played everyone, so there's like some weird results that come out. Um, it's one of the first ranking systems to be based mostly on statistical principle, and it's used today in chess, both in America and worldwide, uh, to rank Scrabble players. Um, it ranks like lots of multiplayer online games, uh, so you play like Halo or something like that. That's actually like sort of how they're computing the ranking. Um, and even in professional sports. Um, one thing that's really important to think about with um, trying to do rankings of something is that the true talent of a competitor is not necessarily reflected in every match. So for example, um, if I were to play against Chad in chess and I beat Chad in the game, you might assume that I'm a better chess player than Chad, but uh, if we played 100 games, he might win 95 of them. So like, there's a difference between like, the observation of a single result and the actual skill level that's displayed. As you play more games, uh, you can count on the accuracy of the results a little bit more. So Elo's like, key insight was that he decided to treat uh, the performance that someone had in matches as uh, assume that their talent is a normally distributed variable. Um, one thing that Elo is really good at handling is situations like international chess, where different competitors may face each other, but they may not um, all face each other. So uh, this also like works really well when you're trying to rank NFL teams because there's only 16 games in the season and there's 32 teams. So like not everyone's played everyone. So if you want to know like are the Steelers better than the Patriots, no they're not. Um, <laughs> you, but they hadn't played each other. You can use like how they played against uh, common opponents. Um, here's the basics. Uh, two players have a rating. Each rating represents their observed strength. The winner of the match takes points from the loser. But the magnitude of the points exchanged depends on the expected and the actual outcome. So for example, if a heavy favorite beats an underdog, they get a very, very tiny amount of points taken away from the loser. But if the underdog beats a heavy favorite, they steal a massive number of points because that result was not expected. Um, and in, in contests that allow draws, such as chess, um, an underdog that earns a draw with a favorite actually steals points from them. Um, and in chess, uh, the original ELO implementation, a draw is treated as half a win and half a loss. I'm going to show how the math works in a second. Um, Calculate the ELO. Here's the really, really simple version. Use the rule of 400. So for every match that you play that you win, you add your opponent's rating plus 400 points. For every match that you lose, you add your opponent's rating minus 400 points. You divide the sum by the number of matches. As I said before, draws are considered half win and half a loss. Let's take a look at how this might work. Uh, I play one game against an opponent with a 600 rating and I win. 
one game against an opponent of a 1,000 rating and I lose, one game against an opponent of a 1,300 rating and I win, 1,600 plus 400 plus 1,000 minus 400 plus 1,500 plus 400 divided by 3, my ELO rating is 1,433. Um, there's one wrinkle though, which is this thing called the K factor, and the K factor is used to basically make sure that events that have happened more recently get weighted more strongly. So the idea is that um, R prime represents the, my, my new rating, R is my um, original rating, S is the points that uh, I actually earned in a tournament, E is the expected points I was supposed to earn in the tournament, and then we multiply, so you, instead of doing an ELO ranking for my entire career, for every individual tournament I play, we have to run this calculation again. The good news is that this is like really, really straightforward. Like you can do it in your head, you can do it on paper, you can do it with a calculator. Um, the K factor changes as you move from being a beginner player to a master player. So um, uh, the US Chess Federation uses like a K factor of 16 for master players and 32 for beginner players. The idea being that when you're a beginner, each match that you play in like official tournament play is like a much, much more significant record of your true talent because you played fewer matches. Um, I just talked about that. Cool. What's awesome about ELO? ELO can be calculated by hand. Um, it avoids most subjective judgments with the relative reports of various tournaments versus other tournaments. So it's not like the tournament in Boston is more prestigious than the tournament in New York, so we're going to weight those results more heavily. Okay. Um, and what's not great, um, it encourages people who have really awesome rankings from avoiding playing with people uh, so they can preserve their ranking. Um, and this is my bibliography. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>